Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. Our gathering chant is number 644 in our CBW, O God, our help in ages past. Our presider is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Please stand. <laughs> Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today I'm going to be offering the prayers for the Mass in time of pandemic. And we come together as people of faith to pay, pray to God for all of our needs, and particularly at this time uh, to pray for His assistance as we deal with the present COVID-19 pandemic that we may worthily offer God our prayers and petitions, we pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Genesis. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel, for his part, brought of the firstlings of his flock, their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. In its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till this the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. The word of the Lord. Our Psalm number 80, the refrain. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Restore us, O God, let 
be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you O lord the pharisees came to jesus and began to argue with him asking him for a sign from heaven to test him and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said why does this generation ask for a sign truly i tell you no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them. Getting into a boat again, he went across to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In reflecting on the first reading today, there were three things that struck me. Uh, the first one uh, has often struck me, and it's the infamous words of Cain, am I my brother's keeper? And of course, the answer to that is yes. Uh, God has called us as brothers and sisters through baptism to care for one another. The second thing that struck me is the words that, uh, the, that God says to Cain. If you do, what, what he, when he asks him, why are you angry? Why has your countenance fell, fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its, de its desire is for you, but you must master it. If you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. I was struck by this, that uh, in our lives there are times when um, maybe we don't do well for one reason or another. And at those times, sin is lurking at the door, and we must master it. And the third thing that struck me was something that I read in the commentary in the Word Among Us for today. And in the Word Among Us, they focus on and, and, and point to the fact of the great compassion that God has for Cain. It points out, they point out in, the, in the, uh, their commentary that it th in three different ways God reaches out in compassion to Cain in today's reading. The first one is that the Lord engages him in conversation when he's angry. Uh, the Lord takes time to say, you're angry, what's wrong? 
to talk with him, to, to, to help him uh, work it out, to, to, to let him articulate what's bothering him. Secondly, that the Lord then warns him against sin, the sin that's lurking. You know, that he gives him a warning. Be careful now. And third, that even after Cain has murdered his brother, the Lord protects him. That even though he's guilty, God's love for Cain does not end. And that he protects Cain from the violence of others. Uh, people that might, for one reason or another, go against Cain, he protects him. These three reflections, and particularly that third one, speak to me about that need that we have, or, to, well, how we are called as followers of God to seek to do the same as him. Uh, that in our lives, we're called to reach out to others, to listen to them, uh, to help them to work through things in their life, uh, to warn them uh, of dangers that are around them, especially sinful dangers and to be there for them and protect them even at the times when they may have done wrong, to, to hate the sin but love the sinner. When I was reflecting on that message, it reminded me of different times in my life where people have done that for me. Certainly my parents have done it over and over again, but I was thinking of other people, uh, a, a brother priest at one point, or several times, uh, and people, uh, parishioners uh, and... Uh, uh, congregants who um, have treated me with a great maturity and, and a great love and reflection. As we continue in this Mass and as we continue in this time of pandemic, I think the first reading speaks to all of us. Uh, it calls us to recognize that need that we need to be brothers and sisters to one another and to care for our brothers and sisters, both in terms of the care that we give them, uh, being there for them, helping them through this time, uh, warning them with compassion at times uh, in, in the midst of their struggles, and forgiving them when they maybe at times uh, are sloppy or forget or um, are, are just are weak. Uh, and in doing that uh, for others, uh, we're also called to reflect on the times that it's been us that have needed that and to thank the Lord for the way that he is compassionate to us and the way that others have treated us with God-like love. God bless you. One of the ways that we help others and also express our gratitude for the help that we have received is through the prayers that we offer for the needs of our world and its people. And so with confidence, let us now offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders, that especially at this time of pandemic, they may receive the Lord's guidance and may have the wisdom and courage they need to lead well. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who care for the sick at this time, for all those who are seeking for cures and, and to reach out and to help those in need. We pray for God's grace and blessings for them. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who struggle with illness or anxiety or hurt or fear at this time. We pray for them that in the midst of their trials and tribulations, they may feel God's presence and consolation both from the grace of God and from the care of his people. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who in some way or another, like Cain, have fallen, who have allowed sin to get in that, that has been lurking and, and has brought them to evil. We pray for them, for God's forgiveness, and that they may feel God's care and, and may have the repentance that brings them back to the Lord. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, that we may day by day seek to be our brother's keeper, that we may seek to serve our brothers and sisters in the way that God has served us. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, 
For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, 
when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, mere unworthy servant, with all bishops, clergy, and deacons and your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. They are in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
our communion chant 6.2 in our celebrating song, Dona Nobis Pacem. Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Our missioning chant, 6.29 in our celebrating song, O God of past and present. steadfast flame.